What's going on guys? The day is finally here. It is the day that Marty McFly travels to the future with Doc Brown. I should say it's the day he arrives. October 21st, 2015, 4.29 p.m. if you want to be precise. The clock tower in the courthouse even works. What the? Is that Doc's notebook in there? Hey, that looks just like the courthouse. You got a So for today, I just wanted to make a quick little video, show a few uh, games that yeah. you guys can get your hands yeah, on to get your Back this to the Future fix in. Give the old carp something new to nibble on. So for you gamers out there, there's a few choices. I think my personal favorite would be the Back to the Future game that Telltale made. They released this in 2011. They re-released it with some updated kind of graphics and performance enhancements. It's available on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 and PC. It's $20, so not that much. And it's basically a point-and-click adventure game. It's, it's pretty fun. I'm not really good at these games, so I usually struggle with them a little bit. But if you grew up with uh, LucasArts games, or you're into the newer Telltale games, this one's not quite as uh, choice-based as those are, where you're picking all your dialogue and everything, and things change depending on what you pick. This one's kind of a straightforward story. But it does have the endorsement of Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis, who consulted on it. It's got the voice of Christopher Lloyd as Doc Brown, Tom Wilson as Biff. And there's a guy that they chose to play Marty who sounds spot on. It's got some good music, great sound effects. It really just feels like the Back to the Future universe. It takes place after Back to the Future 3 in 1986. Doc Brown is missing and you go on a little quest to find him. It's a fun little adventure. It'll last you probably six to eight hours in that window, depending hey, on how long Why you take with it or how long the puzzles it? take you to figure out. Sorry, son. Must have been an overzealous. It's got a ton of little Easter Just eggs in it as I well that fans of the, the series will definitely catch and enjoy. And this version comes with a documentary on the making of the game and how the idea started, and it went from idea to an actual thing. So it's a pretty good package for only 20 bucks. The only reason I'd recommend renting it is just because the replayability may not be there for some people. I know some people love these adventure games and can replay them a lot. This one doesn't have the choices, like I said, so you can't go back through and make different choices. Um, so really the only reason I'd see replaying this is because you want to get all the achievements or trophies or it's been a while and you want to jump back into the Back to the Future universe. Rock on, Biff. If Telltale games aren't your thing and you love Lego games, then there is a Lego Back to the Future kind of mini game out there for you. It came with Lego Dimensions. So basically if you buy the starter pack for Lego Dimensions, you can buy the Back to the Future add-on, which comes with a little Marty McFly figure, a DeLorean, and a hoverboard. In the game it only unlocks three levels for you and also this kind of hill valley hub area which you can basically just cruise around. There's lots of little hidden items, uh, gold bricks to collect, puzzles to solve. And it's fun just to check out as a fan. And one of the really cool things in it is that you can actually time travel in it. So if you take your DeLorean and you go up to these little areas that you kind of park on and then you just kind of floor your car you'll see it slowly go up to 88 miles an hour and then you'll suddenly appear in the old west and so it's kind of gives you multiple areas to explore and there's some things you can do in the past that will change what you see in the kind of present day Hill Valley, which is the 1985. So it's got some nice little Easter eggs for fans. They're coming out with a uh, Doc Brown 
figure later to bring into the game as well as his uh, time traveling train from Back to the Future 3. The biggest problem with this is though is the price because you need to pay a hundred dollars to get the Lego Dimension starter pack and then this is an extra twenty five dollars I believe. So you're already out $125. There's not that much content, especially for that price if you're just looking for Back to the Future. If you're enjoying the base game, then it may be worth it. If you like the Toys to Life game genre, then again it may be worth it. But if you're just solely looking for Back to the Future stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go with this one. This is only if you've already purchased LEGO Dimensions and didn't know about this or didn't have it yet. But again, the amount of content is not there for Back to the Future fans. But it's still definitely fun. You've seen everything you really need to see in this video. I really wish they'd release a full LEGO Back to the Future game like they did for Jurassic Park or Star Wars where it breaks up the three movies and the multiple segments. And this, they just had three little levels that were about 10 to 15 minutes long each, maybe. So it was a little bit disappointing that we didn't ever get a full release. I can still hold out hope for Ghostbusters, but I don't see that happening. It'll be interesting to see what the LEGO brand does now that they have Dimensions out, if they just start to put out packs for the game, or if they continue releasing full games. That's enough of this game, we are moving on to the next one. So the final game that is great for Back to the Future fans today is Rocket League on the PC and PlayStation 4. They've released a Back to the Future car pack where you can get a DeLorean to play with. It only costs two bucks, so if you're able to pick up Rocket League with PlayStation Plus, and you still have it, or you haven't played it for a while, or you're a huge Rocket League fan, this is perfect for you. Car looks great, it's really cool. Your boost is actually your tires leaving a fire trail, and it makes that awesome Back to the Future car noise when it accelerates. And there's not really too much more to say about it, that's all it really is. So if you just want to cruise around and play some. Mad Max style soccer with a DeLorean. This is perfect for you. If you haven't tried out Rocket League, I highly suggest it. It's a lot of fun. It does have a bit of a learning curve, so be ready for that. Play offline for a bit to get a feel for things. I'm still not very good at it just because I haven't put much time into it. But it's definitely crazy. A lot of fun. A lot of moments that'll make you stand up and scream out of amazement of what just happened. And why not do it in a DeLorean today? So while the rest of this match plays out, there's a few other great things Back to the Future fans can do today. They just released the 30th anniversary Blu-ray. If you missed out on the 25th anniversary Blu-ray, you can pick up this one. If not, I don't think you really need to. They did also release the complete animated series of Back to the Future. I don't know if anyone saw that cartoon when they were a kid. It's kind of fun. It's definitely for a younger audience, so people that are past 13 years old probably won't really get too much enjoyment out of it, but it's cool just to put an episode on and see what it was like. Christopher Lloyd does some cameo appearances in it. It's live action in places, and even Bill Nye the Science Guy is in it as well. He works with Doc Brown on some things. So there's some cool little Easter eggs for fans in there. We're also screening Back to the Future 2 at a lot of movie theaters tonight at 7 p.m. So depending on what time it is in your time zone or when you watch this video, you can go do that. And just to talk about the films themselves and my thoughts on them, we'll do a quick review for you. First Back to the Future movie, I think, is pretty much the perfect movie. Everything in it, it sets up a lot of things in the beginning and it pays off on pretty much everything in the end. It's got great characters, great pacing, it moves real fast, never feels slow, still funny, and the ending to it is probably one of the best cliffhangers that makes you just want to watch the next one right away. I absolutely love Back to the Future. It is probably my favorite of the series now. 
Now, Back to the Future 2 was my favorite of the series when I was younger, and I still do enjoy it. I love the view of the future, the hoverboards, the jacket, the shoes. It's all a lot of fun. I really wanted to see Jaws 19. Unfortunately, we didn't get it. Uh, but we are getting a new Star Wars movie, so I'm not going to complain, because that looks awesome. If you guys didn't see, Universal actually did release a kind of fake teaser trailer for Jaws 19 a few weeks ago. It was pretty funny, definitely worth checking out. I will throw a link below for you guys. Back to the Future 2 had another cliffhanger ending because they shot it at the same time as Back to the Future 3. I believe this is one of the first times that they actually did that where they just did both films back to back. Because at the end of Back to the Future 2 there's a little teaser trailer for Back to the Future 3. Unfortunately, I'm not such a big fan of Back to the Future 3. I think it's a little kind of corny and cheesy with the whole love story, and it just feels a little bit forced. I think they could have done a little better with their whole Old West setting. There's still some funny parts. I don't hate it. I like it. But it's not... I'd rather just watch 1 and 2 and leave it there, usually. But as a franchise, I love it. One of the things that I miss most is the Back to the Future ride they had at Universal Studios. I'm still mad they took that away for The Simpsons. Like, come on, The Simpsons, really? I don't know. I'm not such a big fan of that. I think Back to the Future's better. But yeah. Let me know in the comments what your favorite Back to the Future movie is and why. If you think I'm way off on Back to the Future 3 and you love it, I know some people out there do. Also let me know what you guys have done or did today, since you'll probably be watching this in the past. If you want your mind blown, you can now think that all of Back to the Future takes place in the past after October 21st, 2015. So think about that for a second. If you guys enjoy the video, please like and subscribe for more gaming videos, which is primarily what will be on this channel. Definitely excited for Halo 5 and Star Wars Battlefront coming out soon. And there will be some other games on here. I'm going to let the rest of this match play out so you can watch it if you want. But until next time, remember the future is what you make it, and I'll see you guys on the next video.